Hello, everyone. This is Tim Johns with my dear friend, Jim Wilder. Hello, Jim. Hi, Tim. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's so Good. delighted to be with you. Um, we're going to uh, have a very special conversation around the importance of bonding and attachment. Uh, this is day 20 of our 21-day Daniel Fast, so we're just about there. It's Saturday, It's and January 25th. So, Jim, um, there's some important Bible verses that talk about oneness and connection. You know, we're, we're one with Jesus. Uh, Ephesians 4, 3, it says, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Then you, of course, you have the early church when he exploded. It says they were of one mind, they were of one heart, they were of one lifestyle. So mm -hmm. you have all this oneness language and organic connection. And you have probably one have been one of the most significant people in my life within the last three years to help open up and deepen my understanding of how to help people connect uh, as family. So I can't tell you how honored I am to be here with you today. And why don't you just comment a little bit about your own understanding of attachment, your own passion for it, why it, why is it, how is it important? Just talk about attachment a minute. What is it? What is it anyway? You know? Yes. Well, the um, the subject was a mystery to me most of my my life. Uh, came across it first through the brain science, you know, and it used to be called uh, imprinting. You remember the little ducks that followed people, and you know, there's interesting uh, uh, documentaries, for instance, of people who raised geese and then got an ultra light and flew with the geese to show them how to go uh, south and migrate and all those things because basically our brain is built to uh, assemble an identity by copying somebody but it does, shouldn't just copy everything otherwise we'd end up being cats dogs you know whatever was moving around the place right. uh, it's supposed to follow the person that we're attached to it's a special little reaction inside that says here's the person that's most joyful to see me this is must be the person that i'm supposed to learn to imitate to be like and um, the the whole idea of attachment then within the brain and within creating a self is the central force. That's what takes your brain from being a jumbled mass of spaghetti when you're first born mm -hmm. and grows a Tim or a Jim or whatever else by copying somebody. And along the way, we found a num numerous people who were not getting any better when they were receiving counseling. They tried like everything, but they couldn't make progress. And we realized uh, something was off, and uh, we think God brought it to our attention and knowledge that what was happened is that that process of copying somebody else's mind uh, had gone wrong, and they needed to attach to somebody and essentially grow a new mind. Now, suppose that's what God is talking about when he's saying that uh, we should attach to God and through Jesus and essentially grow a new mind that thinks in a new way, understands us who we are in a different way. Well, that project actually sort of became as a start as an experiment. Let's see if, if people can attach to someone and copy their mind, uh, will they change? And we found out that people that weren't making any progress in therapy, the people basically cast off in most communities because they couldn't fully function the way other people did. Once they could form an attachment, um, a connection to somebody, uh, then they could start learning a new way of being, a new identity. They, they became part, you might say, of a new family. Mm -hmm. And in this new family, we have new ways of thinking and different ways and new understandings of who we are. Wow. Uh, and something about that just sounds Kind of like how uh, Jesus talked about um, him and his father and us, that um, he was attached to his father and loved him. I think that's the Bible word for it, attachment for love. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have love means a lot of different things. But if love is permanent, something that lasts, then it has to be attachment love as far as your brain is concerned. So 
when I began to see that the people who would otherwise couldn't heal or get better needed this, I began to wonder, you know, who would actually attach to people mm -hmm. and form a new family or relationship with them. And the only group in the world that I know that's commissioned to do that is Jesus and his church. So, yeah, that's kind of where my passion uh, kind of came out of uh, unexpectedly. I wasn't expecting that answer, but came unexpectedly into my life. This is fantastic. So I, I failed to mention that Dr. Jim is a PhD in uh, psychology and has gone into deep depth in brain research. And so he's an avid follower of Jesus. He's a kingdom person. Um, and he's written multiple books on relationships. And he's also founded an organization called Life Model Works, um, which is rich with research and insight on relationships. And so one of the books is Rare Leadership. Another one is Living from the Heart Jesus Gave You. Um, a new one's coming out with Dallas Willard. I'm very excited about it, Renovated. Yes. Mm -hmm. So back to this whole concept of attachment. If what I'm hearing you say is, is true, you're telling me that a person developmentally can't really discover their true identity and nor can they establish the character necessary to live well nor can they mitigate their emotional, uh, emotional uh, health unless they're attached and bonded to a group uh, of people, that, to a person. That's exactly right. Um, in, uh, but there's a side effect to this that we have to take into account, and that is your brain is designed to form sort of, let's say, one time forever attachments. In other words, we don't adjust... Uh, you you can plug your USB cord into all kinds of connectors and get a charge out of it, but an attachment is becomes permanent if it's going to be life transforming. And so, what's needed to support an attachment is a community which lets new but eternal relationships form. In other words, the way we average church does things you drift in you drift out or you come in excited and you leave you know mad upset yeah uh but we don't really anticipate we're forming lifelong or even eternal relationships and i god's a bit in the business of creating an eternal people mm -hmm. so what ends up happening is if you put two people just together to form an attachment it'll almost always go bad uh, by going bad, I mean it'll become sexual usually or break apart and, uh, you know, turn into a huge fight or both. It'll trigger, it'll trigger those six big negative, you know, the six big emotions. Mm -hmm. Something's bound to go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but to create a family bond, you need a community around that says, let's grow this in a way that forms a people. So the thing that seems to be strategically missing around the world isn't the desire for attachment because uh, you know joy all you have to do is smile at somebody and they start forming an attachment to you pretty fast wow but uh when things start to go wrong and they need to grow how many relationships are turning into be permanent i mean it's pretty hard nowadays to even find a marriage that'll run the course right mm -hmm. um you know church membership and all those things all decide sort of transient Mm -hmm. And so um, what's really needed is a, uh, a group of people who are going to form a new spiritual family on the basis of these are eternal relationships, and we're going to help each other grow up. Uh, you wouldn't happen to know of any places like that, would you? I think I might. You're, you are so They're not common. You're talking our language. Um, this This... You all have to understand something here. I went, this is this is this goes very deep to me because in the '80s I became aware that God's strategy for building was tr tribal, and I began researching <clears throat> in Scripture God's heart for family, and not just <clears throat> temporary, short-term church life, but long-term eternal relationships. Excuse me, and 
<clears throat> so we formed a family of churches. And, but I didn't understand attachment styles and the six <clears throat> big emotions. And so we, we suffered greatly from breakups and disappointments because <clears throat> we hadn't integrated inner healing or mm -hmm. deep attachment styles. <clears throat> so I have been praying and fasting and asking God for help in helping people form long-term relationships over large geographic areas that wasn't controlling, <clears throat> that wasn't led by narcissistic leaders, that was safe and had the atmosphere of freedom in it, that actually cultivated maturity in people. And so I've been working on this for 30 years. And so when I met Jim and he started opening up the te technical side of this, in fact, he said, God's so committed to unity that he wired our brains for oneness and attachment. And here's how it works, Tim. And when I began to see that, literally we were in my living room and Jan and I began weeping because he brought to us the tools we needed to, to, to take on this responsibility of raising up a, a family of churches. And it, I know uh, God's really put this desire in everyone's heart and mm -hmm. the getting it started is easy, but sustaining it requires maturity and skill and, uh, mm -hmm. You know, people that gather around and help you when things go wrong and, and know how to do that. And uh, um, that's, you know, the, the, we both are aware of a number of experiments in the church in the last mm -hmm. half century right. that have gone kind of badly uh, because it became more about control than about joy and become becoming who Jesus meant you to be. Not out of bad intentions, but uh, you know, these are these are things that God is revealing to us. Then when we look back at scripture, we say, oh, well, it was there all the time. I just never knew that that was right. important <laughs> or that that's what it meant. And that's been the exciting part for me. Yeah. And so um, Jim and I have been forming this friendship along with Michael Sullivan, who is now the CEO of the Life Model, where we've been friends since the 80s. And... Um, Jim is one of these people that has a unique, I would say, prophetic vantage point. It, it's almost like I see him, I told him, I said, I see you as a satellite floating in the stratosphere, a, a, a accumulating massive data and intel that will, that will reshape the way the church thinks and views itself and equips us to, to th and my job is to be on the ground applying and mobilizing and equipping people to learn how to connect and attach in a long-term way. And um, of course, experimenting with this, working with this, there's disappointments and pain. I can't even begin to speak of you uh, to, to you about fully because people have over the years disconnected from this family and done so with offense or with hurt or distrust. And we didn't have all the tools we needed to help reconnect them or stay connected under pressure. Well, now we do. Yeah, and that's the path that God ha has us on. By the way, uh, he's given us a little sign here today. You don't see it, but mm -hmm. often when I'm praying, the deer come and lay down right outside my window. And no sooner did we start this call, but a doe and her little fawn came about three feet away from where I, I'm sitting right now. And that, They've been there for most of this conversation. So uh, I love it. Oh, I love this. Just one of those things that, uh, you know, and then I'll just be talking with people. They'll go away. But if I'm praying, they show up yeah. and stay. And this call has attracted the deer. And so yeah. I'm thinking, I believe that's a sign from the Lord. You know, I love those signs too. They're, 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 they're physical communication that comes not just didactically, systematically in our left, Part of our brain, but prophet, the parabolic, and visual, mm -hmm. and I think that 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 having that little doe, that um, fawn there, and that young, is really speaks to me of generational transfer. But Jim, you and I dream of large, you know, families of families that stay connected long term, that have such richness of relationship and healing that they can transfer this from generation to generation, and reproduce it. That's how it's meant to be. I think that's God's original plan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've kind of fallen apart 
individually and as families and we need reassembly uh, within God's family and kingdom to remember who we are really. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to ask you to finalize our session here by talking to, to, to every person out there about their own deep need for attachment and group identity and how would they go about finding a tribe of their own people and what do they need to do to find these people and to attach to them and, and help establish a group identity with that Hesed sticky love, that Hebrew word for love, which is all about bonding, covenant. So how would somebody that's listening to this, who I know it's triggering deep longings, what would they need to do to go on the journey of finding their people? Well, the um, plan wouldn't work at all if it wasn't that God is behind it. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I have always told people to do is start asking God, who are the people you've put in my life? Mm -hmm. And uh, what is it, you know, after they start showing up uh, that keeps me away from them? Because everyone comes in there saying, well, this will never work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, humanly, I think probably not. But, uh, you know, we've got enough disasters to document that. But you start asking God, who are the people you put in my life? And then um, I think you have to practice what we call Emmanuel prayer. Start listening to God for direction. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that will make it go fall apart is when human beings try to assemble it. Mm -hmm. So, But if you start learning together, let's sit together and listen to God. Um, let's learn to hear his voice when we're in, in communities, all the manual prayer things. Uh, and then um, uh, you've got a bunch of resources as well that help people figure out now what should we do to uh, help help this grow and find people with more maturity uh, in that regard. And you know, you're following God's assembly. Uh, he's bringing the people into your life. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, uh, you know, you turn to the people now with the maturity um, to uh, develop, you know, more skills, to help this grow. That's, it's a pretty simple plan, uh, pretty outrageous at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yet I see God blessing it uh, in all parts of the world where there's people who've got education of the stuff we're talking about, brain science. And those who simply listen to God and go, well, I don't know about any brain science, but, uh, you know, I find God leading me to do this. And uh, so I just encourage that simple walk of obedience. Uh, and you'll find, you'll find the resources will come to you. God will provide out of his richness. Mm. <clears throat> so this is so important for us to understand that, that um, we do need a direct communication with God, the Father, God, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit. We do need that vertical, so to speak, in the unseen realm. We need to access him through, through that, you know, the eyes of our heart. Yep. At the same time, we need that, that horizontal connection with people. Um, so God loves skin. He loves people. He, he became a human being. And so the vertical and the horizontal are critical, right? And the body of Christ and Christ himself are inseparable. Yeah, he's made it that way, and one will not grow without the other. There so you go. They can I, exist, but they don't grow. See, and I think that's, that's important because the Western church has basically said, if you get Bible information and you go to meetings, then you can grow. And... There's parts of things that God does, but there's a whole bunch of things that human beings have to do to facilitate making disciples. That's our assignment. Making disciples. Yeah. And so That's I see, it. yeah, and I see a lot of people stalling out and their, their development is arrested. In other words, they stop growing because they haven't connected deep enough into a, a bona fide, what I would call tribe of believers with its well-led. Uh, and they just they just stay intellectually, you know, committed to information, but they they don't grow in their in their capacities. So yeah, the the brain is very much like a muscle in the sense that if you don't practice it, it doesn't grow any strength and capacity. So 
you can read all about love and understand God's love, but you won't exercise unless you go to the gym with all the other sweaty people down there and, and work out. <laughs> there you go. So we are appealing to you, whoever you are watching this, to begin to pray deeply uh, for your tribe, for your people, and, and for you to begin to learn the relational skills and get healed so that you can come and bond and attach to real live people that adore you, delight in you, and, and you're willing to go on the hard journey of, of transformation. And so, Jim, would you just pray right now for all those watching that something big would happen in them um, on this topic of attachment and bonding and group identity? Well, Lord, you've said in your word that uh, we see through a glass dimly. It's a, it's a really poor mirror we have to see who we really are and what you're up to. And that what you end up doing is more than we could have asked or thought. Mm -hmm. uh, probably because if we thought about it, we wouldn't want it. We wouldn't understand this new being, this new church, this new uh, family you're putting together. Yep. Because previously a lot of us were enemies uh, or we didn't like each other or we were afraid for one reason or another. Mm -hmm. So I ask that you would touch us that we might hear your voice and that you would see in others what you see in them and you'd restore to us the joy that saves us mm -hmm. so that uh, we might might experience your delight your grace your uh, wow you are special mm -hmm. and uh, even though you frequently forget i will provide you with the people that will help you to grow and we ask that we'd be given the grace to enter into that so that um, uh, when we actually get to uh, meet you face to face, mm -hmm. you will be delighted and we'll say, yeah, you know, we really have gotten to know you very much better during our lives. And we'll thank you for that in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jim. God bless you, everyone. See you tomorrow. <laughs>